All right, welcome back to the MP. Um, so in this video, we're gonna continue talking about debugging and debugging strategies that can help make you a better uh, programmer and a better software creator. So, you know, people make mistakes. We all do. I do a lot of software creation. I make a ton of mistakes. The more software creation you do, the more mistakes you make. And so if you talk to someone who's like, oh, I never make any errors when I'm programming, it means that they don't do a lot of programming because people make mistakes and this, is, this stuff's complicated. Now, the difference between, you know, software creators that sort of like give up and don't get a lot accomplished and, you know, and, and those that go on to build cool things and to realize their, their, you know, dreams and to be able to create stuff that they're proud of is not how many errors you make because everyone makes mistakes. The difference is whether or not you can fix those errors or not. And so these debugging skills are super important because you're going to keep making mistakes. That's normal. Um, and what you will happen is over time and you gave them more experience is you'll get better at fixing those mistakes. So let's talk a little bit more, more about debugging, which is the process of fixing our errors. Now, up until this point, we've talked about a couple of strategies for getting started that included cleaning up our code so it's easier to understand and to read, uh, putting in some instrumentation so we can see what our code is doing, and then also understanding what is expected, right? Particularly when we're working with the test suite or we're trying to figure out uh, how to get something to work, right? We have to figure out like, what are we trying to accomplish here? So in this, in this time, I wanna talk about a really important debugging skill, which is reading error stack traces. So I've made a small mistake in my starter code for the MP, and I'm gonna show you what happens when I try to test it. So you'll see that like all of the tests for the starter code, including the ones that worked, are now failing. They're all crashing. That's what that red symbol indicates. Um, and you'll see what's happening here, right? Um, and so you see that um, there is this, uh, so this is the error that's being caused, which is an exception and initializer error. Um, and that happens in Kotlin when an init uh, block throws an exception. Now, the exception that's being thrown is this illegal state exception. And it says, couldn't load places.csv. Uh, okay, now, what else is in this stack trace? So actually, if you go down here, this is a uh, little bit more of the stack trace. Um, so what does the stack trace uh, tell us? So what this tells us is the sequence of method calls that got to the point where the error occurred, right? So it's almost like, you know, if you were uh, taking uh, taking a route, like you were trying to follow a map or taking a route and you made a bunch of like uh, decisions to get to a certain point and then something bad happened, right? Well, so we sort of want to understand like, how did we get here, right? Um, because frequently something that happened along the way is the source of the problem. And sometimes what happens in our programs is that, you know, a, a problem that we've caused doesn't manifest itself right away. It takes a few more calls later for some things to actually go boom, right? Like you made a small mistake and then, you know, uh, you passed a bad value to another method to pass it to another method. And eventually somebody checked the value to, to ascertain something about it. And it was like, oh no, this is bad, right? Um, and so reading these stack traces allows us to figure out how we got to a particular point and frequently points right at where the problem is. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanna do is talk a little bit about how we got here. So you read these stack traces from bottom to top. The last thing that happened before the error occurred is right at the top. And a lot of times we just wanna, you know, you'll see that these are highlighted in blue in Android Studio. This means that this is code that we wrote. Um, and a lot of times the thing you wanna do with an exception stack trace is just click on the top line because that's the last thing that happened before the error and a lot of times that is the error. That's the line that's causing the error. But I wanna show you a little bit about the information that's in here. So let's go down to the bottom. So this isn't the bottom of the stack trace, but it's the first line that was called in our uh, code. And this gives you a sense of what's happening. Uh, this is during testing using this framework called RoboElectric. And you can see some RoboElectric calls down here and up here uh, that are being made by the test runner. So there's this other library that we're using to test our code and that library is making its own calls. But at some point it starts booting up our app. And the first thing it does is it calls onCreate in our application class. So this is in Favorite Places application. We talked a little bit before about how this class uh, is used by all act can be ac accessed by all activities and so it's actually initialized even before the activity is started so at this point 
I'm trying to run the app, but I haven't even started the main activity because I'm creating the application class, the favorite places application class. So that happens uh, here, uh, this call to onCreate. And then the next thing that happens is it calls server.start. And the, so we, we start here and I'm creating the server. So actually this code runs because it's part of the, the server block. So what happens here is when the server is being initialized, um, this uh, call to load places gets, gets done, right? So you'll see uh, load places gets called here. Um, and now, let's see here, hold on a sec. Lost my place, okay, so I was here, right? And then I'm in load places. Um, and actually this, this is a little bit of a, uh, of, a, of a sort of a detour up to the top. But now um, I'm, I'm in load places this method because this is called when the server object is initialized. So essentially you can think of right here, I call server.start. Um, that's just an empty method that's used to create this singleton. So we talked before about, or there's some comments here about how a singleton in um, Kotlin is an object where there's only one of them that's ever created. And to create it, I need to access it. And so that's why there's this empty method here. When this empty method is called, uh, Kotlin starts creating this. And the first thing, it sort of starts at the top. It starts creating this class. And this field on the class is initialized by calling this load places method. So that comes up here and starts to run load places. Now, um, the error that I'm seeing is caused by, uh, and it says an illegal state exception. And that's caused by this error method. So we talked before in Kotlin about how we can uh, throw, we have these uh, helper methods for throwing different types of errors. So there's require, which we use on our parameters. It throws in a legal argument exception. There's also check, which we can use at any point in our program to check the state of the world. And that throws in a legal state exception. There's also a method called error. Error just throws an exception with the past uh, argument as a string, as a message, and you'll so, so and it throws in a legal state exception. So what's happening here is I'm getting to this error uh, statement. And why am I getting here? Okay, this is interesting. This is a little bit of Kotlin uh, review for us. So what's happening here? I'm trying to create, I'm trying to initialize this input and I'm using the, uh, the, the, the save, what's called the safe null operator in Kotlin. So first I do get resource as stream and I pass it the string that I'm trying to load. So what I'm doing is I'm loading a file and I'm using this get resources stream uh, syntax because I'm loading a file out of the resources directory of my app and you'll see that the name of the file is places.csv. So I get resources stream and then I try to create a buffered reader and then I use, I call this use method and I call read text on the buffer reader. And that gives me all, essentially what I'm doing is just reading all the text out of this string and this reads this into a string. Now, these are these null save calls because if I hover over get resources stream, you'll see that it returns null, it's, it says returns, an input stream object or null if no resource with this name is found. Interesting. So if it can't find a resource with the name I pass, it returns null. So get resources stream is returning null. Um, and then this call doesn't happen. This call doesn't happen because these are safe null operators, right? They don't get called on null. And now down here, I have this Elvis operator. And this is frequently used in Kotlin if I want to uh, throw on null. So I don't actually want input. If I, if I remove this, let's see what happens. So if I remove this, uh, one of the things that's gonna happen is input now becomes a nullable string. See how the type changed? because it's possible get resources stream returns null, buffer reader doesn't get called, use doesn't get called, and so the, the string can be null, right? And I think, uh, yeah, when I, when I pass this to the string reader, that'll cause a problem. What I've done here to avoid this, because I don't want input to ever be null, is I've used the Elvis operator, and on the right side of the Elvis operator, I've put this error statement. Remember, the Elvis operator only, the right side only gets evaluated, the left side evaluates to null. So what's happening here is this is like a, this is almost like I'm, I'm making a series of calls and then if any of them return null, I'm gonna end up on the right side of the Elvis operator and I'm calling error. So this is how we got here, right? And we got here because something is wrong, right? If we got here, well, I guess we knew that. That's like most obvious statement ever. We got here because something was null. And when we start looking at this, and, and again, the goal of a stack trace is to focus your, it allows you to focus your attention 
at the right spot in your app. There are multiple different ways to do this when we're working with our code. Sometimes a good way to focus your attention is to think about what did I just change? So if all your test suites were passing and then you add a line of code and now they're all failing, the line of code you just added is a pretty good place to start looking for a culprit, right? It's the thing they change. And a lot of times, you know, we encourage you to run the test suites a lot and get into this loop where I run some code, run the test suites, write some code, run the test suites. Part of the reason to do that is because it makes it easy to detect when you've made a change, right? or what you changed, right? It's like, I go a little bit, I check. I go a little bit, I check. As soon as something breaks, I'm like, uh-oh, like something I did just didn't work. Sometimes you can't do that because sometimes you have to write a big chunk of code and it all has to work before you can make any forward progress. But whenever you can work incrementally like this, it's a good idea. Okay, so, but I'm using the stack trace to say, okay, something went wrong around line 50, thereabouts. Now in this case, uh, you know, the error is not on line 50. Uh, the error is, manifesting on line 50 because there's this call to this error method in Kotlin which throws. But the reason it's throwing is because this chain is null and the reason this chain is null is that I misspelled the name of the file. So the file is called places.csv and I spelled it places.cvs. So let's go ahead and fix that and we'll run our test suites again and now what you'll see is that you know I'm, I'm failing a few tests because it's the mp0 starter code but I'm also passing the test I expected to pass. So this is the change that I made that caused the problem. Okay, so to review the stack trace, it's like when you have an error that has a stack trace, you should almost rejoice a little bit inside because yes, something is wrong, but when your program crashes and gives you a nice piece of information about what the problem was, you actually have a great starting point for the debugging process. So don't be scared of those stack traces know how to extract information from them. Again, I'll put this back so we can see what happens. Um, so, you know, you read the stack trace, you look for the sequence of events in your code that caused the problem. And in particular, you kind of zero in again, if I, if I wasn't doing this for educational purposes, I would just click immediately on this line and I would start looking around here and try to figure out what went wrong. Like, where is the error? Because the error is lurking around here somewhere. Again, it's not exactly on this line. I have to understand uh, a little bit about how Kotlin works to understand why this error method is being reached. But once I understand that, I understand something in the stream is null, something in the sequence is null, excuse me. Um, and, you know, I can start looking for errors and I can see, oh, okay, shoot, you know, the, the file I'm trying to load isn't there, right? Which, which is what's causing null. And then that causes me to get to the right side of the ELPS operator. So when you have a stack trace, don't freak out. It's a lot of information but learn how to zero in on the ports, the, the, the pieces of it that are useful for you in your debugging process.